Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be showing you my folio editions and my folio society collection. Um, I only have a small collection, um, but the reason I want to do this video is because number one, whenever I feature them on my Instagram or my channel in general, um, people always ask me about them. And I've also been thinking a lot recently about me as a collector and as a book collector and kind of how I feel about my library and, you know, the books that I hold dear to me and also books that are special objects. There have been several kind of conversations on YouTube and just in general life and comments um, that have made me think about my own bookish identity and whether I see myself as a collector or, or just, you know, how I approach my own kind of personal library. And as a child, I would definitely consider myself to be a collector. I collected lots of random shit. Um, but now I've kind of gotten older, I don't really consider myself to be a collector, even though my bookshelves kind of, I think, suggest otherwise. Um, but when I think about kind of book collecting, I'd be so interested to hear in the comments if any of you consider yourselves kind of book collectors. When I think of book collectors, it is often um, when you, you know, collect things to keep, not necessarily to read in terms of books. Um, my whole classics here, I guess, is a collection because it's a specific classic shelf um, and I pick out particular editions. Um, but the majority of them are editions that I read. Um, I do have some books um, that I buy specifically just to keep pristine. Um, like I have my big manuscript of Mrs. Dalloway, which is something for me to kind of treasure. Um, and I have a few editions of classics, like I have multiple editions of Wuthering Heights and various different books um, by the Brontes and Jane Austen and various things. Um, but all those books, I guess because they seem to be one-off, it's not like a series. Now I'm thinking actually I'm definitely a collector. I regret everything I've just said. Um, but I don't really consider them, because like the manuscript of Mrs. Dalloway, that's a one-off purchase. I'm not going to collect every book by that publisher. I wanted to talk about my Folio Society editions today because I feel like they are the exception to my non-book collector life, even though I'm now thinking that maybe I do just collect books. But anyway, these feel an exception because they are books that I don't intend to actually physically read. They're very much for me to keep um, and kind of, I guess, to look pretty. But the thing with my folios is that um, I only have kind of, you know, a handful of them because they're my favourite books. And also Folio Society is really expensive, so you have to kind of wait for sales um, or for kind of very kind gifts from people. Some authors are cheaper than others though. Like I know, I'm pretty certain there's an edition of Tristram Shandy that I would love but I think it's over £100. I'm not even quite sure. Um, but that is one of my favourite books. But that's a little bit too much. That's a, that It gets expensive. But anyway, these are the ones that I have. And the reason I have them is because they are my favourite books. Um, so I wanted to kind of, you know, keep beautiful editions of them. Um, because they're kind of the thing that is like a symbol of my personality. Or of me as a bookish person. I'm going to begin, as I always seem to begin on this channel. With Mrs Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Um, I'm also going to take off all the kind of the hard cases that folio editions always come in. Just because. Um, they're not that special just to kind of keep it really beautiful this edition of Mrs Dallery was my introduction to the Folio Society um, because I wasn't really aware of them and it definitely kick-started my collection and also with the viewpoint of my collection being a collection of my favourite books because of course Mrs Dallery is you know one of my very favourite um, pieces of writing I actually picked up this edition of Mrs Dallery when I was at Charleston Farm which is the home of Vanessa Bell um, the artist Vanessa Bell, Virginia Woolf's sister and obviously a place where the Bloomsley group kind of stayed and lived I think that trip must have been about 2015 um, at the time I was actually researching my dissertation on Virginia Woolf um, and I was doing a whole pilgrimage to kind of Charleston Farm and Monk's House. So in lots of ways this edition really kind of means something to me because I'm quite sentimental and like buying books in kind of, you know, important places or relevant places to kind of the writer or to the setting of the book. One thing I just love about the Fellow Society is just the attention to detail and the way that each edition says um, you know, what type they're using, where your paper was from and, you know, where it was printed and bound um, and they're just really special. I think this is my favourite edition in terms of illustration just because Lizzie Stewart's illustrations are very much something that I would love to kind of have on my wall um, and the way she picks up on certain things and kind of metaphors in the novel or certain characteristics of the characters and um, little things like the kind of the very first kind of 
plate in the book um, is kind of close to the gallery with Peter's knife and that kind of rhythmic motion. The imagery of Peter Walsh and his knife always kind of opening and closing it and it's an imagery and kind of a metaphor that Virginia Woolf kind of also gives to Clarissa like she's always slicing through things and throughout the illustrations are kind of almost these little cutting marks um, that I just think it's really beautifully put together um, and I would love to have one of these paintings on my wall. My second photo edition is also a piece of Virginia Woolf's work and it is A Room of One's Own um, and I think this is also one of my favourites because this is the original kind of cover of A Room of One's Own, um, originally published in 1929 um, and all of these kind of woodcuts are inside this um, but obviously this front is all uh, illustrated or created by Vanessa Bell, Virginia Woolf's sister. One of my favourite things in Room of One's Own is the discussion around kind of normal lives and that in history we've kind of documented these big events um, you know the changing of kings big battles and they're often very kind of male as well but so much of the important things happen in between tea um, and with the little day-to-day -day and sometimes the domestic details which you know by great historians have completely been forgotten but actually has a whole kind of wealth of life in those tiny moments um, and it's something Virginia Woolf talks about a lot um, and in that kind of ordinary life um, it's something that I really like with Mrs Dalloway as well it's something that Virginia Woolf kind of plays with um, the domestic space especially um, but also the domestic space and crossing over into public realms whether that you know is kind of Mrs Dalloway's attic room going into her party whether that's kind of uh, Mrs Ramsey and the idea of going out to sea it's something that she just plays with a lot in her writing it was also kind of the main discussion point really of my dissertation um, but there's just so much in this collection of essays especially if you're interested in writers um, and kind of Wolf's you know opinions on obviously women writing and what they need to write Wolf's discussion of other writers famously Shakespeare um, I'd also suggest the common reader which is um, also really good um, but anyway, this is a beautiful Photo Society edition um, with woodcuts, as I said, by Vanessa Bell um, and also has probably the best kind of end papers, my favourite end papers. Most of the Folio Society tend to be just like one, one plain colour, so I find this really special. And actually, I would love to have this pattern kind of on a cushion. Um, if I could, I would honestly decorate, like if I had a full house, I would love to kind of have so much Bloomsbury-esque paintings and I always imagine kind of maybe painting like I don't know um, a side table in like the Bloomsbury kind of Vanessa Bell style but I know in reality I'd completely mess it up and I'd hate it um, or it looked like something really childlike um, but anyway we all have to have dreams and that happens to be one of mine. Then we have Under Milkwood by Dylan Thomas. Under Milkwood is a play for voices um, and I love reading this because the very first kind of introduction in fact I'll read a tiny little bit um, I think is, is just one of the most beautiful beginnings to anything ever written. To begin at the beginning. It is spring, moonless night in the small town, starless and Bible black. The cobble streets silent and the hunch quarters and rabbit's wood limping invisible down to the slow black, slow black, crow black, fishing boat bobbing sea. The houses are as blind as moles, Though moles see fine tonight in the snouting velvet dingles, or blind as Captain Cat, there in the muffled middle by the pump and the town clock, the shops in mourning, the welfare hall in widow's weeds, and all the people of their lulled and dumbfound town are sleeping now. The small Welsh town is like a microcosm of life, um, and it's poetic, but it's also full of kind of dark humour and quite bawdy. With the lithographs, I do feel like you get a sense of the playfulness which is in kind of Dylan Thomas writing because he's a very funny writer. Um, I don't think, I'm not a massive fan of lithographs. I feel like it suits the tone of the book but it's not my personal kind of style. Um, but it's really interesting because whenever I kind of get these editions I always feel like I learn or just get exposed to different artists and one thing I like about Folio is that 
they do like competitions and things for kind of you know the next artist to then go and illustrate the books so as Folio moves on you get a whole generation of new artists come in with different perspectives from all over the world with kind of different disciplines and ideas um, and even though I am saying that I'm not going to collect Folio Society editions I can definitely foresee when I'm older collecting a, a couple of different editions of these books I'm now going down a rabbit hole because I would love to see how a different artist, for instance, would you know what their take on Undermilk Wood would be, what would be their take on Miss Dalloway. Um, and it's just a really beautiful pairing of kind of literature and art. And I know nothing about art. I like looking at it, but I don't know anything about the history and technique. Um, it's something that I would love to learn about. So whenever I do kind of see folios, I'm always so intrigued by the plates inside them. Next we have two Bronte novels. We have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This new collection of um, the Bronte sisters writing um, came out in 2014 and I think I got the reprints um, that came out in 2019. Um, but obviously I don't have anything by Anne Bronte because I have read The Tenet of Wildfire Hall but I wasn't crazy about it. Um, I'd love to reread it. That's something I'm going to reread hopefully this summer. Um, because I feel like I, it feels rude not to have an Anne, but as I said, I only buy books I really, really love, and I love Jane Anne Wuthering Heights, and just didn't feel that way at the time about anything by Anne Bronte. I think they only do the major works of kind of the Bronte sisters, because I don't think they do Shirley, for instance, which is also one of my favourite books. Wuthering Heights is one of the first ever classics I ever really fell in love with, um, and this also has an introduction by Patti Smith, who I also love. Um, and so I had was just very geeky about that um, and I do really love reading these kind of introductions to all the Foley Society. I should have mentioned um, with the Mrs. Dalloway edition with Michael Cunningham, obviously the author of The Hours, The Hours is actually the reason that I picked up Mrs. Dalloway at all. Um, so that's why I especially love that edition. Wuthering Heights as a novel just really speaks to me, I think, in actually a way I don't think any other book does and it's wildness and it's jealousy it's darkness um, but also kind of you know the beauty of the landscape and the hope and light at the end of the book it was also probably one of the first novels I read that really played with narration or who tells a story and um, whose version is true and how different people are perceived by different people and you know who is in charge of telling that story we we'll obviously Nellie um, and I think when people think of Wuthering Heights, they think of Kathy and Heathcliff, but in lots of ways it really is kind of Nellie's story. Um, and I think it just, every time I've gone back to it, it's the novel I reread the most, along with Mrs Dalloway. Um, probably because it's shorter, I haven't read Jane Eyre actually since reading it um, when I was quite young. Um, but Wuthering Heights is something that every time I go back to, I pick up something completely different, which is true of all these books. This gorgeous edition of Jane Eyre, I think, is also one of my favourites. The kind of ghostly, hovering Jane um, and the twisty, kind of dark tree. Jane Eyre is a book that I'm desperate to reread because even though it wasn't the first classic I ever read, it was the first classic I ever wanted to read and continually got it down from a shelf, tried to start reading it, loved all the adaptations. I was slightly obsessed with this story before having read it. I love the pure drama of it and it is melodramatic, it is gothic, but I think we often sometimes forget that with Jane Eyre because we've kind of made it into a romance um, and sometimes we give all of the drama and all of the darkness to Wuthering Heights, which just isn't the case, so I just love these really brilliant illustrations. The next book and my final folio edition is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Just look at how beautiful this book is. Um, why I love this one so much is because the whole feeling of um, the new Mrs. de Winter being haunted by Rebecca, seeing kind of all of Rebecca's kind of monogrammed items, seeing her writing set, you really feel like this could have been on Rebecca's desk. It could have been one of her items. Um, and I just love that. I think because I love kind of all bits of memorabilia, this almost feels like a bit of kind of Rebecca memorabilia. I think like a lot of people, I read Rebecca because I loved Jane Eyre and because I was told it was almost like a Jane Eyre retelling a kind of modern version of Jane Eyre. Um, and it is amazing. It's just a great gothic novel, real psychological thriller. Having recently read Rebecca now as an adult rather than as a young teenager, I think I view Rebecca herself differently. And obviously we never hear from Rebecca 
um, a, a bit like Wuthering Heights, with kind of you know viewing everything from Nellie and different characters. Um, we never really get to know who Rebecca is. We're only ever viewing, you know, from the recollections of Mrs. Danvers, which is, of course, we know is really twisted, um, and obviously from Maxim as well. And I think I view Maxim as very different now. I'm kind of grown up. Um, I think I kind of romanticised that whole thing. And I think sometimes, again, we can think about um, Rebecca as kind of, you know, the happy ending. The wife, you know, was finally kind of put to rest and they can go off and live a good life. Um, but now I kind of see the complexity, the darkness, um, the power that Rebecca had. I think I just view it really differently. Um, and the whole manipulation of the whole thing, and not by Rebecca, but by Maxim, is something that I just find fascinating. Um, it's a real book that kind of breathes and lives with you. It's really atmospheric. I have been to Cornwall, but only, I think, as a child. I'd love to go back and just spend some time reading some Daphne tomorrow um, but it's stunning and this edition is actually um, has an introduction um, by the late Helen Dunmore which is also really really beautiful so that is my Folio Society collection I hope you enjoyed hearing more about these different editions and also just my favourite books in general and hearing more about why I love them um, I really do treasure these and I'd be super interested to know if any of you have any particular editions that you collect or whether you view yourself as a collector because I totally didn't and then when I sat down and started talking I realised that actually I am a bit of a collector. Um, but yes, I hope you're all well and I'll see you again soon in another bookish video. Um, I'm now going to go and sit and read Jane Eyre. That's what I'm doing this evening, I've decided.